<clears throat> okay, this is the first part of our, um, our series of showing you how to use merchant resources uh, to create your own uh, texture projects. Um, so as we mentioned uh, in the uh, introduction, we are going to do a two-step process. We're going to use this photo reference and a texture set which includes um, this head texture um, along with a body texture and so on and so forth. We're going to combine these things two together, th these two things together <coughs> in Reality Paint to make a unique texture which we can call our own. So uh, let us first start off in here. So um, okay, so here is the Victoria form model by Daz 3D uh, with no particular morphs uh, added to it at this time, and we had imported the um, the textures from our set, which let me show you where they are again. See, we have all these textures from this from this uh, texture set which we purchased, and I'll just recap which one that is. It's this one right here, called the uh, AA V4 Texture Resource Red from Runtime DNA. So, to recap, in case you haven't seen the previous video, the introduction, um, if we modify these textures in any significant way, um, they we can redistribute them that is a part of the license. These are made to be merchant resources for people who create textures and resell them and what redistribute them in some way or the other. Um, this uh, it's sort of a, a a starting point for them. So you can you can say um, I want to do a, a full, full human project, but do I need to really texture every little bit of it myself, or do I just want to focus on the face and the distinctive features and have the rest of it kind of pre-done and maybe I just modify the tone of the skin and so on and so forth. Anyway, let's get to it. <clears throat> so, if we are going to paint a texture, uh, a character texture, uh, like this young lady here onto this model, um, we have a couple of options at our disposal. We could either just paint the texture on the model as it is, or we can morph the model and paint the texture onto it. And so uh, we're going to do the latter. We're going to do a relatively simple morph, but you can spend some more time yourself and getting some more detail into it. But we want to morph the, 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 the shape of this head so it roughly um, matches the, uh, the shape of her face in this, in this photograph. And then so we can then paint the texture on it and she'll look more realistic from the different angles. Now this process works better when you have a side view of the photograph as well. So once you do the, you do the, the, the front, then you can also do the side profile. But in this case, we only have one texture and we got the one photo reference. We got this from, I believe, iStock Photo. Um, it's a great resource if you want to get headshots of different unique people. Just be sure to check that their, uh, their licenses to make sure that you, you can uh, use it for something other than the uh, than newsprint or something, so on and so forth. Because if for celebrity photos, I know they have a different a um, a different sort of license because the celebrities haven't signed release forms. These models typically have re assigned release forms, so uh, you're free to use those uh, the, their their images, their likeness uh, in whatever project you see fit. So, <coughs> with that being said, let's take a look here. Now, um, first things first is we're going to load this um well let's let's first off locate the uh, uh the the photo reference now this is the high res version it's the high resolution version of that we're going to drag and drop it into the uh brush image box here now we're not painting the texture yet because we're going to do this when we paint the texture but we're also going to use this for morphing and let me show you how so uh i'm going to use the shift hotkey to bring the brush tile setup tool Okay, so uh, let me get rid of this here. Now, uh, so if you push the, that will basically toggle between your previous tool and that. So Shift B will give you brush tile setup. And if you want to see this brush image superimposed over your model, then you push the V hotkey. All right, and that's also found here, brush tile view. Brush tile view right there, okay? And so this toggles, so it goes back and forth between your previous uh, display mode which is color maps and uh, the brush tile view and so um, and shift V is also found if you don't use the hotkey or don't remember what it is it's under utility tool brush tile setup okay and by default this is set up to uh, take this image and, and match it to the viewport plane now I'm going to show you a better way if I zoom in closely you'll see this better right 
So now, see this image is superimposed over the model, uh, no matter what it is. So if I rotate around or if I zoom out, it's always stuck into sort of um, this viewport plane. But what I'm going to want to do is for this project is to make this a fixed plane. So let's uh, first frame this out here with the zoom tool. Zoom tool is the F2 hotkey. Navigations are F1, F2, F3. Okay, and they toggle. So if you have uh, if you have F1 for your pan view tool, then uh, if you push that again, it toggles to your previous uh, tool, which in this case is the brush tile setup. So uh, that now we're going to change this to fixed plane, all right? And uh, we're going to click on frame. So now when I um, exit the menu with the spacebar uh, and I click and drag in the viewport, it's going to frame out the um, this uh, the brush tiling. And then I can say it's a little it needs to be a little wider. And this is just going to be rough. This gives us a rough approximation. Then I can click on move, and I could make sure that this is uh, depth is not chosen and I can move this in the uh, uh, the, the horizontal and vertical um, directions and I can line this up with perhaps the nose or so on and so forth and then I can click size and I can do this a few times and I'm going to try to get the best fit I can because the the model doesn't match the photograph uh, exactly it's never going to line up perfectly but that's what we're going to do the morphing to do so, but in the meantime, we're going to use kind of the, the nose as our anchor, the nose and the, and the, uh, the uh, right eye. So we're going to do this, and we're going to get that matching up as close as we can. And let's make a little wider, and move this down. So, okay, it's not perfect, but pretty close. And notice how the mouth, it just doesn't line up much at all. That's perfectly fine. We're not going to worry about that right now. So now, if I toggle that that uh, the, the uh, V hotkey, we can we can at any point take a look at that that image, or we can take a look at the model. And for the purposes of morphing, we're going to use shiny gray. It makes it much easier because you get all these highlights. It makes it easier to see the detail when you're morphing, while those details might not be obvious when you're looking at a texture. So we are going to do a relatively simple uh, uh, morph uh, to match this the, this a little closer to the photograph okay so uh, let's first go here uh, spacebar and then we uh, go deformation tools we have chisels and we have hammers a chisel acts like a kind of a brush where uh, you just click in the viewport and uh, drag and you get a deformation in this case where you see we're bulging like this or if I hold the alt key in this case it'll go the opposite direction okay so we obviously don't want that well, the hammers act upon selection. So if you have a selection tool and you have a selection brush, and then you, you make a selection first, like this, and that's in polygon mode. We want this to be vertices, all right? And we make a selection and we hit the S hot key to soften that a few times, all right? We can say deformation, move hammer, and then you can move that. So these are the two different things. One is more better for on the spot sort of sculpting and the other one's better for sort of very selective uh, uh, deformations. So um, first thing, let's take a look here. And we're going to sort of tighten in this cheek and jawline a bit. And for that, we're going to use the, uh, we're going to start with the bulge chisel. It generally works better with weaker strengths. I'm going to give that 20%, okay? It's better to do a lot of little strokes than one big stroke. It makes it much easier to control. So uh, I'm just going to sort of, uh, let's hit this, hit this uh, V hotkey again and I'm just going to hold the alt key so I indent so it's so instead of bulging it bulges inward and you see that's even a little too strong let's go to 5% and I'm going to do some clicking and dragging in here and I'm going to start tucking in that the jawline a bit like this and so on and so forth. I'm not going to spend too much time on the details. Oh, and I almost forgot to use symmetry. So I'm going to undo all that. And a few more. And okay, and I am going to 
say tool control mirror and symmetry use symmetry okay so that means whatever I do on this side of the model which is light or shaded is going to be reflected on the other side so let's do that again so I'm going to hold the alt key and and just do a bit of this and, uh, and if, if it's a little bumpy at first that's okay we can always smooth it out later and I'm bring this chin up a bit and that's a little too much let's pull it back out we're just going to introduce a bit of shape, something to make it a little more interesting. And let's go back to our photo reference. See here, I want to indent a bit. And also, I want to get a little more uh, detail up here. And so, for that, I'm going to use the deformation tool, touch up chisel, smudge. And I'm going to take this bit and I'm going to smudge it upwards. Um, it might not be so obvious, but if I hit the O hotkey, you can see the wireframe overlay. And then you can see what's happening there. Okay. And uh, let's just take a look around to see what's happening here. Yeah, that's not bad at all. We didn't do anything too weird. Uh, the chin's looking a little pointy. So I'm going to flatten that out. Touch up chisel, flatten. Hold the no, I don't have to hold anything, just click in there. Because we still have that weak strength, so we're just doing a lot of little clicks. And, and I'm going to do a bit of a post smooth as well. I had um, 20, I'm going to put it to 20%. And actually, let's just do some smoothing. I see an artifact growing in there. Uh, let's take a closer look. No, I think I mostly got it. So, let's go. Let's zoom back out again. And, okay. We're going to assume this is good enough. But you might want to uh, spend a little more time uh, maybe getting the, the nose area and the eye. These are the really distinctive parts. So if you really want it to look like the photograph, you'll want to spend a bit more time doing these uh, the contour of the eye and the contour of the nose. Actually, since I said the word contour, let me show you a tool which will help you do that sort of thing. The contour chisels right here. I'm going to put a 10% post smoothing in. Um, well, we'll have to see what kind of strength works well for it. And I'm going to put the wireframe overlay on this because it's very important. And what this does is, is if you draw a path, if you click and draw a path, the vertices are going to bunch up towards that path and based on the amount of post smoothing you have it will happen a little stronger or not so I removed the post smoothing for now and since I have such a weak strength here already and I uh, see if I just drag back and forth it keeps getting bunched up and bunched up so if you want to have some really distinctive uh, features in the, in the model then this is a tool that you would do but this will also introduce texture stretching but which is okay because we're going to be painting over the morphed version. Now if you had your texture set up and you did something like this, let me show you what it looks like. Color maps and uh, overlay here. Now if you look in here, look at all this stretching. And that's not so good, right? So you're going to say, so um, <clears throat> so the main re that's the main reason why we're doing the morph first. Because then when we paint over top of this, it's going to counteract that stretching because it's going to be a kind of reverse stretching. We're going to be painting in like in a flat plane, and it's going to put the details where we want it to be. And like what, uh, and so it'll it'll look stretched on the texture map. So if you look at it here, instead of looking uh, like nice, it'll look stretched here in the opposite way. But here it'll look good, right? So that's what we want. This is where we want it to look good. So that's why we're morphing first. <laughs> anyway. And let's just do a little something up here. Uh, I want to emphasize this contour chisel because this is a really cool tool. Um, let's go back to shiny gray. 
and let's set that O hotkey. And just in case this O hotkey, in case you're you don't like just using hotkeys without knowing where they come from, viewports, shading options, wireframe overlay, and this is this by default is to the O hotkey. But you can always right click on it and assign a different hotkey if you don't like using the letter O. But in any case, here we go. So let's just we're going to do some contours here in this eye area, and I'm going to increase the strength of that to 20 percent there we go and so you're just going to give a bit of crow's feet or something in any case you get the idea right so uh, so you can uh, if you combine this also with a bulge for example so you can you can bring all those together and then bulge that out a bit or dent it in a little bit then you can really sort of make these little cuts which weren't possible before because you didn't have enough polygons there uh, enough uh, to work with now let's just say bulge chisel here and I'm going to do a negative bulge that's way too wide and strong let's just say 10 and 5 but you might just want to put that in a bit so when I remove it, you're going to have some little details in here. You can also achieve this sort of thing with bump maps or displacement maps and so on and so forth. I just wanted to show that to you because that's a that's sort of a, it's a, a really interesting feature where you can pull those vertices towards like you know into the shape of a line, and so you can make these contours uh, which were not possible before. In any case, let's just smooth that out a bit now. This little bit kind of looked a little. There we go and we'll leave this little contour. It's not important, I just wanted to show it to you. That's all. You see, if you look here, if you look at that little bit of detail, it's just something that can give just a little bit of interesting, a little bit of character that you wouldn't see in a typical morph target because uh, it's just uh, the, the person making it might not have had access to that kind of a tool. Anyway, simple little pro tip. Okay, so here we go. This doesn't really look that much like our photograph, but you know what, it's good enough for now, okay? I'm going to be spending, you know, like 20 minutes, half an hour on this. If you want to do a professional project, you're going to spend a few days on it. So uh, you can spend a little more time getting those fine nitty gritty details. But in any case, there we go. There's the, the photo reference back on and off. And um, here's our morph target. Now let me show you in here the manager morph default morphs. This is what we were morphing the whole time is the default morph. But I'm going to rename this by clicking and then clicking again. I'm going to call it face. And just to make life interesting, because uh, you know what is life if it's not interesting, uh, we're going to uh, create an asymmetric morph because nobody has a perfectly symmetrical face. So once you've done that, the base morph, that's kind of the general shape of it, and you want to uh, then do a secondary morph, or you can do it on the same one if you want. I prefer to do it in two different morphs. Uh, and this, I'm going to call this one asymmetry. And for this, I'm going to turn off the mirror and the use symmetry option and mirror and symmetries. You can hotkey this too if you want, uh, just by right clicking. You know, I'll, pretty much anything in the uh, interface, with minus a few exceptions, you can right click and assign it to a custom hotkey. And so you can just do it on the fly. If you're just using it more than three or four times in a single project, then just right click it and give it a hotkey. I, I generally like to use numeric keys for that purpose, for those quick on the fly hotkeys. So now the symmetry is off, I'm free to now do some uh, symmetric operations, uh, or asymmetric operations that is. Um, so let us say, um, if we notice here, I'm going to show you something here, something interesting. I mean, she might be slightly tilting her head in the photo, but I think more so it's that <laughs> this eye is a little lower than this eye, and that's true for most people, right? Uh, most people are, have these little asymmetries, uh, and so um, uh, we can pull this eye down, but just be warned: if you pull the eye down, you might uh, you'll have to adjust your rigging and your destination program, like Poser or Daz Studio or wherever else that you're doing this in, um, because uh, it's going to expect the eyeball to be in a certain position, and now it's going to be down a little bit. So you know, with that being said, we're not going to do that. But uh, let's just do a little few um, uh, generic asymmetry. Uh, uh, adjustments. So let's get rid of this and I'm going to deformation, bulge chisel and let's do a little extra kind of mm -hmm. and let's do a little 
make this cheek a little different than that one. Let's bring out the side of the chin a little more. Let's make sure post smooth is on 20. For this, we want a nice post smooth would be nice. Now, da -da -da. let's indent that a little more. And let's bring up a little bit out here. Actually, oh, with the eye thing. Okay, if you don't want to change the position, position of the eyes because you think it's just going to be uh, too much of a hassle for rigging purposes, you can always, uh, this sort of uh, upper eye area, whatever you call that, that is a good place to sort of get that asymmetry uh, uh, differences. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to make this one kind of, I'm going to use a sm uh, touch up chisel and I'm going to use a smudge. All right. This basically just moves it. So I'm going to move these points up a bit and I'll smooth out these rough polygons later. And I'm going to move this part down a bit. And i to be careful with the geometry around there because it can get bunched up pretty bad if you're not careful. And let's go back to using a bulge. And I'm going to hold the alt and indent this one a bit. And let's go in here and touch up those areas with this smooth. Um, touch up chisel, smooth. And here we go. Smoothing out the rough areas. F1 hotkey to pan over. Click it again to toggle back to the smudge the smooth tool. There we go. And so, uh, uh, yeah, so we got we made the chin a little up. You know, I'm going to do a little more, just a little more. Um, and I'm going to smudge the lip here. Anyway. There you go. We can be at this all day, but you get the point. So we we created a uh, a character with a uh, mostly symmetric face, and then we added just a little bit of asymmetry to make it interesting. And we're getting it ready for us to paint onto. Okay. So in the next video, we're going to show you how to uh, paint this texture. Oops. Over top of these. Um, these texture maps which were the merchant resources and I notice this is not looking good because we've already uh, dull this deformation the texture is not matching it so she's kind of looking all uh, better to shape but once we paint the textures onto this morph things will look a lot better so uh, stay tuned for the next video and we're going to do the texturing